You may have seen my Xiaomi Mi Notebook Air, the 12 inch version unboxing. Well, I actually ordered this here before that one, but it arrived afterwards because it came with slow mail. This is the Live Fan S1. Now it's a Core M Ultrabook that has the, well, last generation Core M. So that's the 5Y10. It has eight gigabytes of RAM, a 2K screen, 128 gigabyte SSD, running Windows 10 Home, I think it is. Has a USB type C port, USB, Three ports, so let's have a look at it. Okay. So this one I got from banggood.com. It cost me about uh, 569 I think it was. Now there's a cheaper one that doesn't even come with a, a SSD. There's apparently, well there is a bay door on there that you can get access to that SSD and it's user replaceable. So that's a first. You don't normally actually see that. So they included a power adapter there, so that's a European one. And you see it comes what looks like to be in a double box here. It's taken a little bit of damage, hopefully it's going to be okay. I can see a bit of bump there on the corner. Now the colour, <laughs> there we go, champagne gold. I wasn't too fond of the colour, but I can put up with a poor colour if the rest of the notebook is just fine. So there is a instruction leaflet or something. That's all like a warranty card there, Infinite Life. That's all in Chinese. What else do we have in the box? Okay, so power supply. Let's have a look at this. It's taking the... Okay, so it's got the figure eight style plug. The loop there. It's quite a standard plug to be able to replace that. So output is 12 volts, 3 amps. It's quite a small power supply there, you can see DC plug, but apparently you can charge this from the Type-C port, well you should be able to, able to at least. Um, feels a little cheap that power supply. Uh, what else do we have? There's another box here. Oops. Oh, okay, so screwdriver and where the SSD might have been if you're doing your own install or you ordered that separately. It's interesting the way they have still included that because my model comes with it pre-installed. All right, so let's have a look at this thing. So on the front there, you can see the live fan or live fan, however they pronounce it, or they want it pronounced. This top there, that feels metal. Uh, there's, there's a bit of flex in that screen there. So on the right hand side here, there's a USB 2 port. Right there we have, that's the uh, 3.5 mm headphone socket, HDMI plug. And there's the front lip. That is actually quite thin there down at the front. Not bad at all how thin they've got that. But it does feel along this edge, this feels, feels like it's plastic just along there. And here we have the USB 3 port, the DC in for charging, and the Type-C port for data and also charging. But I will check that out. And along the back there is nothing there. So on the bottom, you'll see we have two downwards firing speakers. There's torque screws everywhere holding the back plate, which that feels like metal. And there's a little access port there for the M2 SSD. There's also, oddly enough, I just noticed there's a reset switch there, which can be handy if you've been messing around in the BIOS, that will reset the BIOS. And let's have a look at that screen and keyboard. So there we go, more gold, more gold keys. Let's have a look at how much, it's a little bit of flex in that, that feels quite solid, I'm pushing down really hard there. And I just hold this up to the camera so you can get a better look. So that's the keyboard layout, as far as I can tell everything is there that you would want. Uh, there's status LEDs at the top. We've got home, page up, page down, end along here. Uh, microphones located on the keyboard. Okay, so that's probably going to pick up keyboard typing noise then if you're typing and talking at the same time to someone on Skype, for example. And the front facing camera is a 1.3 megapixel unit. So let's get this powered on. Hopefully there's some power in here. I'm seeing a blue LED light up there. 
So I managed to get it to power. What I had to do is just keep holding down the power button and tapping it, but the blue light was on and then finally it came up. Boot time was quite quick, just went straight into Windows that I can see was already set up with a user here. So I'm gonna go into system now and just have a quick look at things. So it has Windows 10 Pro. Okay, I did not expect that. I expected to see Windows 10 Home and Windows is activated. And then we have eight gigabytes of RAM, 64-bit operating system, of course. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to access all of that RAM. Have a look now in the device manager. So what do we have under disk drive? Kingston. Okay, did not expect that. Normally, it's 4C brand or BWIN. Kingston SSD there. So 128 gigabyte SSD. And under the network adapter, we have an Intel dual band wireless AC. So that is good to see. Having that on there. And free storage, 99.5 gigabytes free. And the scaling is set to 200%, which doesn't look too bad. I'll just show you that screen resolution, which is 2560 by 1440. You can see along there. So, not a bad screen resolution. Just looking at the screen now, it looks very good. Very sharp. It's got a matte coating on it, which I do like. So that should be good for outdoor use. I can already see that it's not reflecting much at all. Unlike my Xiaomi Mi notebook, which has got a glass screen on it that reflects a lot. So viewing angles look quite good. Uh, the brightness at the moment, I have that set. Actually, just what it powered up with. So I'm not too sure what it's set at, to be honest. And it's at 16%. So just cycle through them. So that's 25%. 50%. 75 and 100 that looks very bright there and dims right down sorry to zero percent nice and dim so i have a quick look now at the screen in a little bit more detail here so this is some photos i took on a galaxy note 4 quite punchy colors from samsung it does look really good the screen a very vibrant red here being displayed correctly and those black levels are very good too. This is a, a quick 4K clip, this one right here. No trouble with that. So have a look at the viewing angles left and right. Very decent. Not bad at all. That looks really good. And vertical again that is really good i've been a matte coated display this isn't uh it isn't reflecting really anything at all there so it should be good for outdoor use and i'll just show you the lowest brightness setting just how dim that is that's 100 percent brightness which is very bright that's overpowering the camera and then it dims right down to quite a nice level there for late time use it's a shame that the keyboard is not backlit like the xiaomi me notebook ear Here's a close-up there of the touchpad. Now the touchpad has a plastic texture to it. It's okay, the accuracy is using that. If you can see the mouse pointer there. That seems quite good. Not too bad. It does support gestures, a double tap, right click there. And the left and right mouse buttons. I don't like the way they sink in so much there. And you can see the keyboard layout. It's quite solid. There's a, a tiny bit of flex there. Not too bad. Seems alright to type on my first impressions. The feel of the keys, the tactile feel that they have to them isn't bad. And travel, I would estimate at the moment, just looking at that, about 1.3 or 1.2 millimeters travel, similar to the Mi Notebook. Doesn't look too bad. So we have all the keys we want. They've got home, page up and down, end, print screen is there, which is a common one they like to use. And then we do have shortcuts here for the screen brightness sound and the wireless you can turn that off too so it doesn't seem too bad the color of it so the keys had this gold color it's not as bad as i thought not as bad as what i saw in the press photos either so i just want to quickly see if these usb ports are going to power an external one terabyte drive this is a toshiba basics that looks good it looks like that's going to work yes that popped up with all my files there so i'll test out now the usb 3 port 
Now you'd be surprised at how many devices actually can't do this when some of the tablets that I have tested out, they're not able to actually do this simple test. You just don't have the power output from the USB port. So this should also work. I do not see why not. Okay, now that drive now, that's flashing blue, USB 3 mode, and yes, that is working just fine. And the last thing I wanted to test is will the USB Type-C port accept charge? Yes, it is now flashing. It's gone green actually because the battery is almost pretty much fully charged there. So that is good. We can charge it via the Type-C port. Oh, and almost forgot, will that Type-C port power an external hard drive? Yes, okay, it will too. So that's good. So that's basically giving us two USB 3 ports there on that side. All right, so I'm just benchmarking the SSD, and so far those read speeds look good. And I wanted to have a quick listen to the speakers it has on it. SSD benchmark here is finishing up, so read speeds look good. The writes may be a little bit slower, but it's 128 gigabytes. At least the 4K speeds there aren't too bad at 88. And can it be opened one-handed? No, not possible. I have a quick look inside the little flap here. So this is where you can replace or insert your own SSD. So if you buy the model that doesn't have one included, then you're going to obviously have to open this up and install one. Okay, that's metal, that one there. So there we go, that's a M2 SSD, and that looks to be 122 by 42, perhaps longer. Hang on, I will make sure for those that want to order. So yeah, so that's definitely, that's 22. And the height of it, okay, that's 60. So that's 60 millimeters. And let's check out the weight of it too, because they do claim it is quite light. So it's uh, 1.16 kilos. That's not bad at all. So that is the Lifan S1. So good things about it. Well, it's got 8 gigabytes of RAM, wireless AC, has a Kingston SSD in there that looks to be reasonably fast. 428 gigabyte one, that is, at least. And the downsides, well, the top of it seems to be plastic, no back keyboard. And the weight of it is good as well, and it's nice and slim on the front. Screen looks really good, very good screen there, but my biggest concern so far I think is that battery life. Now Windows is just reporting about five and a half hours at the moment. Battery bar now has gone to about four hours. So I'm gonna to have to look into that in a little bit more depth, four hours there, it's estimating at the moment. But those are just estimates. I'll get some real use on it, I'll be on the internet, I've been using it a little bit more, and try and gauge just how much battery life we're going to be able to get out of this. Probably that 2K screen isn't the best on the battery, which is probably why we're going to get those kind of figures. But I will check that out. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I will see you back later on with the full review of the Live Fan S1.